Now, our very special guest today started his music career when he was a youngster, and he shot to international fame when he dropped his single, Gotta Get Through This, in 2001, and a musical depiction of a real-life situation at the time. Now, he's the winner of a Brit Award. He's had six UK top 10 singles and four million in album sales from 2001 and 2004 before taking a break from the music world. But now, he's back with a bang and touring South Africa for the very first time. Too much excitement, Mr. Daniel Bedingfield, in our studio. Right. It is really, really good to have you here, Thank you man. very much. As, as I said earlier on, you, you've been a musical inspiration to many people across the world and to myself you. as well. You'll, you'll hear the story a bit later on. But let's talk about music for you. It's always been a way for you to express real-life situations mm -hmm. and the moment that you were in. How, how has music grown for you over the years and where you are right now? Um, there's a lot more kind of guttural realness that I have now. Mm. Um, I'm happy when my voice fails me because it's part of the real-time wrestle with, with your instrument, with your art. So it's a lot more... Uh, it was quite cheesy, I guess, the first first album, yeah. which is kind of cool but in South Africa. I think they like cheese here, you know. So. It, it, cheesy works all yeah. over the place. I mean, back I in the so, day, too. it was like, you know, if you're not the one, got to get through this, Very all these cheesy. good songs, <laughs> make, making you good cheese as well. Yeah, I enjoy cheese. And then you decided to part from that world. No, it's just, it's just I, I, you know, just a, a much more real, um, so the same amount of emotion and, and just twisting and turning, the music should still take you on the journey, but also with a lot more pain. People like Tom Waits and Bob Dylan have that much more sense of, of, of real thing about it. So that's, that's where I'm at. I'm I get the feeling you feel like it's... Well, because I, I have that feeling as well when it comes to music, that because you have this gift, you have a responsibility to do something great with it and mm -hmm. not just, um, you know, just to kind of pop off... The cheesy charts. Yeah, especially you know. being good looking like yourself, no, no, you no, must know no, exactly. No. <laughs> Dude, but uh, the, the five city tour that you have uh, in South Africa is going to be very, very exciting. What can fans expect? Because they, they have the picture of you of uh, a couple of years ago when, you, when okay. you started off. And here you are rocking a mo and, you know, leather pants and all of that. <laughs> what can people expect? Um, oh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I expect the, the best South African musicians I've ever worked with and ever heard of um, jamming their asses off in a <laughs> family show, um, jamming their little heinies off in, on stage, and we're just... They're really, really good musicians. Yeah. Um, so I guess it'll be wild. And from, from you musically, what, what, what is it that they can... I mean, it's, it's obviously going to be a very engaging in performance. That you yeah, it's kind of a hip hoppy rocky kind of mix. hip hoppy rocky Urban kind of alternative. Is that how you define the genre? Of kind it? of. And uh, obviously, you have, you've got a big love with South Africa. And oh, you, mate. Where, do, where does it come from? Oh, mate, yeah. he's a, he's a self-proclaimed Kiwi. Kiwi. I'm a Kiwi. He I'm loves born in New Zealand. All my grandparents and great-grandparents are Kiwi. So I come over here, it's like being home, eh? Yeah. Rise and... Stuff like that, it's just like, it very fits into my culture. Straightforward people, I can generally trust them. Um, the, and also this desire to overcome racial barriers and cultural harmony for yeah. me that, that exists here now is this growing. It's very exciting for yeah. me. And you've, you've really pushed the boundaries in terms of music and how you depict it as well. You're talking about racial integration and you know, bringing people together. Your latest EP, Stop the Traffic, Secret Fear, has this video that's gotten people all across the world you know, got their hair standing up, some of them loving it, some of them hating it, and uh, you're, you're in the nude in this video. Okay, let's, let's first talk about the song itself. What okay. is the song all about? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next. <laughs> but check, there it is. We have a, uh, we, we've got a rolling right now on screen. So you were swimming in... Uh, we what built a huge there? box. Yeah. And it was a rotating box, and uh, we set it on fire, and then we got inside it, and uh, fil and I filmed it actually. Um, I was able to direct and. and uh, Yo, you and filmed, you built, you produced. Yeah. You, this was your baby right now. Yeah. And uh, tell me about the experience of filming this, because when you and I chatted uh, a week ago, yeah. you said that being in the water, there was a, there's a scene somewhere where the water gets lit and yeah. there's a fire. That's right. I think it's a, it should be at the end of this. It's very exciting. And you literally had to fight hot. for survival. Yeah, it's really hot inside that box. Because <laughs> you, you, you were breathing out of some kind of tube, right? Mm -hmm. But why, why do you decide to take it to this kind of level? Um, this is the actual video. There's, a, there's one that's kind of safe for worky with the fire and if they can find it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this well, is pretty, uh, pretty racy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's cool. But I mean, obviously, a, a real, you know, something real happened in you that made you feel like, you know, this is the kind of stuff you want to be putting well, out there. Well, there's a lot of elements to a relationship that feel like they're repetitive and um, uh, the kind of cycles that you go in where um, there's a lot of love and then there's a lot of fighting and different things that happen. Um, this is my, my kind of description of 
uh, within myself of how a relationship feels and the cyclic nature of it. See, there you I go. I mean, look at that, man. There's, I saw the tube right there. Yeah. Don't point the tube out. Sorry. Bro. I couldn't remove that in post. <laughs> I didn't do any post. There's no effects in this season. My face does actually go through the fire. This is very, very risky. Please do not try this at home, no matter how the musically creative you want to be. They said, if you do this next shot, that shot, we're not here. So they, they all walked off. The fire guy walked off. Everybody walked off and said they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Wow. Luckily, you didn't, you didn't sustain any injuries from this, right? <laughs> no. no you, you, you I mean, no, my face was even more good looking before I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, through your work as well, I mean, uh, through the Stop the Traffic Secret Fears, there's this organization that you have, your global charity, Stop the Traffic, that yeah. you do work with. Tell me about the work that you do. Um, about six, five or six years ago, we, we recognized me and my friend Steve in London, that, that uh, and he's a politician and he's also really respected figure in England and um, he, we realized that, that, that nobody had been uniting the clans and bringing the very few people have been doing that, bringing together everyone who is fighting slavery and human trafficking in the world under a kind of one kind of conglomerate kind of organization. So rather than start a new one, we just tried to get everybody together and then we worked with the UN and the EU and Steve actually represents, uh, he actually advises them on, on the subject of, of human trafficking. So. That's now, I think, that's now the largest kind of bigger anti-human trafficking movement. Um, but that's generally due to Steve, and I just try and bring awareness as much as possible. Well, man, amazing, amazing. It's great to have you here. And of course, Thank people you. can follow you on the Twitter. On Twitter. Tweet me. I'll tweet you back. I really will. He really actually does tweet back and follow yep. his very crazy Instagram uh, pictures as well. He's a big lover of art. We'll talk about yep. that. But uh, when we come back, Daniel Biddingfield will be performing live right here in our studio for the first time in South Africa. Thank you. If you're 18, watch the video, let me know what you think. <laughs> I'll see you just now.